Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee, DJ Envy is not here, but we got a young entrepreneur in the building. <laughs> he goes by the name of Lemmy Plummer. He is the founder and CEO of the Zeus Network. What's up, King? How you doing, man? I'm Good blessed, black, you. and highly favored. How are you, brother? I'm great, man. Great. Appreciate got that you nice unisex here. fragrance on. Hey, you already know, man. Come on. No. Okay, we see the outfit, the wide. I'm, I'm trying. I, listen, I had to come here dressed in something, you know. No, Getting money. Suit on, <laughs> Getting you know? money. Smell money, like money. <laughs> appreciate it. Appreciate so it. So listen. So let's. Talk Talk about Jocelyn's Cabaret. Is Uh-oh. that the number one show on Z- on? No, Zeus? It's, it's it's not. It's the number one show in the country. <laughs> <laughs> it's the number one show in the country. Okay, That's okay. All. No, it, it no. It's, it is it is definitely uh, one of our number one shows for sure. She's done an incredible job. Uh, you know, just with with her show. I mean, we you know, it, it's loud, it's mm-hmm. provocative, but uh, people people enjoy it. They love they love the show. They love Jocelyn. You know, she's been doing this thing for a while, so. Uh, you know, I'm happy to be partners with her on this project, and um, yeah, she's she, you know we've licensed it to uh, We TV the first season. Uh, you know, we season two is is is, I mean, getting uh, so much feedback. I mean, you know, it's it's. It seems like you have a good system. You get these shows right, mm-hmm. and then you run them. And Zeus is what is it? Four ninety nine a month. Four ninety nine a month. Four ninety nine a month, <clears throat> and then you license them. So, I, that's an option. That's an option. Mm-hmm. I mean, we try not to li- license our content too much to, to various networks. I mean, if it, if it makes sense, um, then we will we, we'll, we'll license it. But, you know, uh, we like to keep our content, uh, you know, exclusive on, on Zeus. So, uh, but, you know, if the deal makes sense, and in this case, it made sense. You know, it was COVID. wasn't a lot of productions mm-hmm. going on. They reached out to us, inquired about, you know, uh, uh, the show. And so we ended up licensing it to them. But, you know, we're not, that's not really our thing, you know. You did it with Black China Show also, right? We did, yeah, we licensed it to Black China Show to WeTV as well. Um, I mean, we've had ser- several networks reach out um, inquiring about our content, but <clears throat> we try, like I said, we try to keep it exclusive to, mm-hmm. to Zeus. And so it's been our customers, you know, <clears throat> love the experience because it's so loud and our content is uncensored, it's raw. We don't like to water it down right. and and censor it up so much so, you know, uh, where where the experience or what they're watching is not, you know. What about on Prime? Like on Prime, you guys are also. Yeah, we're you know we're available on multiple devices, all mm-hmm. you know all the major devices, you know, just like you would get Netflix everywhere, you get Zeus, you know, on on uh, you know every iOS and uh, Android product, um, from you know your Apple TVs to obviously your iPhones, um, um, etc. And then you know we're available on Google Chromecast, uh, Roku is is uh, one of our major devices that folks are subscribing and watching on um we're available on xbox um Damn. everywhere yeah, everywhere we can't we can't run from it well, we can't <laughs> run from it well let's back up because we jumped right into it <laughs> I know, with, right, right. with the zeus network like i, I want to know who 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 are you and how did this even come about who first of all who is lemmy plumber yeah who, who is lemmy plumber wow uh you know i am i am uh obviously the founder and ceo of zeus but you know I, i'm a creative i, I you know i started off <laughs> excuse me in the building, I'm um, in the excuse me in the business. Need some water. Give me two seconds. Start That's Envy's water, by the way. His oh, oh, shoot. Water. Okay. Oh, I can't His drink it. No. <laughs> no, you acting nervous. Oh, like, oh, trust you me. acting nervous like Zeus was started with drug money no. or something, bro. I'm like relax. Okay. This <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, so <clears throat> my parents owned a bunch of TV stations, so I kind of grew up in the oh, business. Oh, okay. So they were they were uh, they came out around the same time as. Uh, uh, Bob Johnson when he launched BT, they just happened to launch a bunch of religious stations. So we had a bunch of networks in in uh, in Michigan and New Orleans and several other places. So I kind of grew up in the business. I learned a lot about you know television and uh, just wanted to kind of expand my brand um, outside of religious television and really you know you did go do a little that bit more mainstream. Show. You did do that. I, preacher, I did. I yeah. did the preacher show, Preachers of LA. That was a show that I sold to uh, Oxygen um, several years ago. We franchised it to you know Atlanta and Detroit. And uh, it was it was a huge success um, on, on that network, and so uh, so yeah, it was great. But but you know, your parents were your mentors. They were meant definitely. All my right. parents were mentors. Uh, my brother, you know, who uh, I've, I've worked with for a long time, LJ. He's been a mentor and somebody that I've worked closely with. Uh, also, uh, uh, the president of Zeus, uh, Jason Tober. It's actually his birthday. Happy birthday, Jason! It's his mm-hmm. birthday today. But um, he was he also worked for the network, and. Uh, you know, it was it was great. It was uh, I learned a lot. You know, working with my parents, and uh, you know, again, wanted to go a little bit more mainstream, stream, and do something different. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I came out 
uh, and went out to L.A. And so uh, just, you know, the rest is history. So See, this makes perfect sense because you don't see black people just up and start networks. You know what right. I mean? Of course, you mentioned Bob Johnson. You think about yeah. Oprah with own. You think about mm-hmm. Diddy with Revolt. But your family had a cluster of stations. Yes, they did. So what did you do back then? I was editing. I was an editor. Okay. I was a, I was a cinematographer and editor, and uh, that's actually what helped re- really kind of get get my career going. When I when I moved out to Hollywood, I was I was uh, putting together a lot of sizzle reels and decks, and you know I, I learned all the ins and outs of, as far as production, post production, et cetera. And so when you when you have that knowledge, it just makes things a little bit easier. You know when you're trying to get projects off the ground. So uh, yeah, it, it was it was great, but. Um, like you said, back then, if, you know, having a network is, is not easy. You know, mm-hmm. my dad had to go through and my, my mom, you know, getting a license from the FCC to even get a network. It was a completely different process than it is now. And so they were able to do that. Um, and yeah, they, they had a lot of success. I mean, the, they had, they've had the networks for, I mean, I mean, decades. And so, uh, it, it you know, again, it was, it was great, but I wanted to continue and carry the legacy. So you know, in a different way, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, religious TV is completely different <laughs> than what we're doing over at Zeus. But, you know, <laughs> a little a little different. Um, but uh, but it, it's uh, it's 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 great, man. I'm, I'm happy to carry the legacy. I'm happy that, you know, Zeus is having incredible success. But, you know, it, it's a lot of things that happen in between, right. you know, uh, working for my parents at, at a young age to. Launch That's around. what I want to know about. Yeah. Cause we never talk about the process. We just see the end result. Yeah, yeah. You know, I it's crazy. So when I when I when I uh, moved to LA, uh, man, about 15 years ago, uh, I started off as a production assistant. Um, I was a PA on Extreme Makeover Home Edition, mm-hmm. which was a, a pretty big show for ABC at the time. And I and uh, <laughs> I love I, you know I love sh- yeah. I love that show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it was a tearjerker. It was a tearjerker. It was a great show. They they definitely helped a lot of lives and people. Um, but I, you know, working on the show as a PA, it was uh, it was it was pretty interesting. But I, I I observed and I was I was watching you know kind of the producers and and just really uh, studying what they were doing. And I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to I want to be a showrunner. You know, mm-hmm. and so I didn't really know how to be a showrunner. And so, but that was definitely something that I was interested in, and I was I just kind of gravitated to that, and uh, I did it. I, I was I was you know people don't <clears throat> people don't see it, but you know, as a PA, you gotta you gotta start somewhere. Mm-hmm. That's right. Absolutely. And I was taking out trash. I was, you know, uh, you know, delivering meals to the talent and production. I mean, it was it was tough, it, and that was a tough show to actually PA on because it was so many people. How did they treat you? I mean, I felt like a slave. I felt like a slave. I was one of the few right. black people on the shows. I mean, on the show, so it was, it was, it was tough. You know, I definitely experienced some, some racism on the show, but I just, I, you know, I didn't like let that stop. I was the token black guy, you know, so it was, it was a lot of underlining black jokes and just it, 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 it was uncomfortable a lot of times. Um, and uh, but I, I didn't let that stop me. You know, it was, I just, I. I I, I was I was very motivated to, uh, you know, uh, finish the job, you know what I mean, and and see see how I can grow it, uh, with with that particular project, and I just I just never let that that stop me. It was it, it, it was what it was, and I just kept it pushing. And what was next? Um, <clears throat> so after that, I ended up, uh, you know, uh, after about two two uh, two years on on working with Extreme, uh, I ended up just wanting to. Uh, again, produce executive produce. So I had a meeting. Uh, my manager at the time, his name was uh, Mark Mark Atkins, Simbad's brother, and he had a relationship with the president of BET at the time. And we had a general meeting. I told her what I wanted to do, and I had a bunch of ideas and sizzle reels. I had a lot of product out there. I was I was shooting and editing, and I was. She just said, "Let me see your work." Saw my work. I, right after the meeting, I mean, I can't make this up. I got a call from Business Affairs at BET, and they said we want to offer you a first look deal. And I was 21. A first look a deal. First look deal at BET at 21. Wow. And so. What was the name of your production company? Uh, Three Sons Productions at okay. the time. Uh, and so we were in-house executive producers, uh, my brother and myself and uh, Jason uh, Tobert, and uh, we uh, it w- that was tough, a completely different experience, but it was it was it was very humbling it was it was very rewarding and I learned a lot at the network I was there for almost three years. You know it's interesting they. Um they gave you like, you know, it was a deal worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, but it felt yeah. like a lot at the time, I'm sure. Yeah. But then when you look back at it, they kind of got you for a steal. 
You, you know, I wouldn't say they gave me hundreds. How, how'd you know they gave me hundreds of thousands of dollars? Oh, because I read it. Oh, you did? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, <laughs> um, no, uh, <laughs> no, no. They, they they paid us really nice. They paid us nice, <laughs> and um, it was it was great. But no, it it it. I don't think it was a steal. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to disclose how much we made, but we we made good money. Right. But no, it was it was like, hey, look, if if we could sell shows inside of the company, we did that. You know, I ended up selling sell? one of my. I sold a show called Vindicated. Um, it was about uh, folks wrongfully convicted of crimes and showing what their life was like when they were exonerated. But we produced on Terry Crews' show, The Family Crews, The Monique Show, several shows. So mm-hmm. uh, they just attached us to a bunch of different projects, and it was great. And it was. Did you negotiate when they gave you the offer, or were you? Like- no, no, no. It was all included in the deal. Okay. That was so. That's that's. But BET at the time they were trying to they were trying to do a lot of their productions in house. Mm-hmm. You know, they didn't want to continue to pay a bunch right. of third party production companies to facilitate the shows. So they were like, look, how can we bring everything in-house? And mm-hmm. there, we were focused more on the reality programming. And then I think it was uh, the Akils who were doing uh, most of the scripted. And so uh, Loretha Jones, again, she had that was her strategy, and that was what she wanted to do. So it worked. And then, unfortunately, I think she ended up leaving and resigning, and then Stephen Hill came in and, you know, th- we, you know uh, and did his thing. And then at that time, I kind of – I was out, but I, I wanted to launch a full-service production company. And so – that was important to me because it was it was really no black full service production companies in Hollywood. A lot of these shows are produced by white owned companies, That's right. mm-hmm. and so uh, people always tell you now if you really want to get some money, start your own production company. Yeah, full I'm, service, yeah, full, full service, service one. full service. You know, and that's that's something that you know we don't really we don't really see and get the opportunity to do because at that at that level, you know, the network is 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 really uh, you know expecting you to deliver the show and facilitate the productions. And so they pay millions of dollars to do it. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, for me, it was it was great. I was about 20, 24 when I got <clears throat> when I sold my first show to. Uh, wow. Yeah, it was crazy. It mm-hmm. was um, Preachers of L.A. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, uh, the 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 network exec or the head of Oxygen at the time believed in me and was like, look, I'm going to give you the shot. I, I came in. And I said, look, let, let me let me run it. Let me let me facilitate. I don't want to partner with a, another production company. And for people do. listening, you had a great sizzle reel. Mm-hmm. So what is a sizzle reel and how do you put together a great sizzle reel for everybody that's like, I have an idea, I want to pitch a show. Yeah, a sizzle reel is just pretty much a trailer. You know, think of it as like a trailer. You know, you're trying to sell your product, right? So you want to kind of get to the bottom line in like a couple minutes. And so, you know, executives, when you're pitching these networks, they don't want to sit there for 15 minutes and watch a pilot. Mm-hmm. They don't want to sit there for 10 minutes. You know, it's pretty much... You know, elevator pitch. You know, look, this is the idea. Here's the product. Let me know what you think. You know, it, here's the cast. I mean, they 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 pretty much know what they want. You got to kind of just, you know, give it to them pretty fast. But for me, the, you know, with sizzle reels, it's yeah, it's 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 you're investing your own money and what you believe in. So for me, it was I went out and shot and, uh, you know, we put the put the project together in a, in a small way. We edited the sizzle, put a deck together. And and we presented it, and you know my sizzles just you know they ended up just popping. I mean they were like they were they were like high quality, um, top notch. And so I got a I got a I got a uh, a uh, um, straight to serious order. So mm-hmm. all the sizzles that I've ever put together and pitched to networks, all of them I've, I've been able to. I don't know how, but <laughs> I've I've been able to go straight to series. No pilots, no pilot presentations, nothing. Those are great feelings, man. Oh, yeah. you get that straight to series order. Yeah. So so what happened after BET? After BET, that's I sold I sold uh you know uh the Preachers of LA franchise mm-hmm. uh, Music Moguls It's actually funny, so Music Moguls uh was, was featured Birdman, Snoop Dogg, Damon Dash, and Jermaine Dupri, and uh, when I sold that show, literally the day you guys interviewed Birdman, I, we were supposed to be filming it, Ooh. and I told the team I said don't worry about it we'll we'll figure we'll it out. <laughs> I was so mad we yeah, didn't get you it. Should have been here. We, man. We, I, I went dark that day. <laughs> I went dark on the most epic Breakfast Club interview uh, moment, <laughs> filming that show. You know, and, you know, there was a guy who was recording that interview, and they put just the audio up. I think. Okay. And, I mean, it might. I think it was just the audio. I don't remember, but it had like 72 million views on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, it was, in like it was crazy. Hours. I mean, it was crazy. It was crazy. But yeah, uh, no, was that. Like, Damn it! I was so mad. Day to not be there. <laughs> was right. that okay? So listen, I know. I remember at one point you were supposed to do a series on The Rock. Yeah. Right, with Damon Dash. Yeah. Was yeah. that so was that before or after Music Moguls? Um that was that was after, but I mean, you know, we D- Damon and I developed a great relationship and uh you know, he we 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 both wanted to launch ne- uh, networks. I mean, he had his, I had mine, but part of our 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 docu series with him was just following their lives and so it was 
you know, it was it was great. But uh, we we talked about doing the rock, and uh, you know, we again, Damon, he had so many other things going on. We had other things going on, and we just couldn't really make it happen um, at that time. But it was uh, it was definitely something that we were excited about and still excited about. But uh, but but to your point, uh, as far as after it was um, it was it was you know we sold I sold several shows, uh, preachers, music moguls, the Westbrook, a show called Living with Funny. I sold that to two different uh, two different networks, Esquire and Oxygen, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then two sides. I partnered with Viola Davis. We sold that to TV One, and at that point, I was just kind of over. I was over it. I mean, we brought in tens of millions of dollars. It was great uh, in revenue. Uh, it was it was you know we were we were getting these series orders. But I did a lot of that go in your pocket because I'm trying to get to the point where you have the capital to start yeah, a network. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, we make money. We make money. I mean, I don't know how transparent and candid you want me to be as far as... You don't got to put no numbers out yeah, there. Yeah, I, I think... We see the watch. We see the watch. <laughs> we see the watch. You know. Um, but, I hear it ticking, though. <laughs> so, but no, it, it, you know, as far as the the process and the money, I mean, yes, I, I was able to save up a lot of money, mm-hmm. but we, what we get as far as the production company, we make our money... Two ways, right? Uh, on our on the margin. So, you know, if they give us a budget of X, you know, uh, we we end up uh, making money off of office space, camera co- camera equipment, rentals, edit bays. So that's like, you know, we we overcharge mm-hmm. the network on that, and then you know we make our profit there, and then we also get a percentage of the EP fee. Right. So uh, if 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 you have a great attorney and the network really trusts you, you know, we can we can make money if if we're able to you know, keep the underages and actually be under budget. But most of the time we're over budget or <laughs> on budget. And so it's, it's hard to, 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 to keep underages. But yeah, I, I was able to save a lot and I said, I wanted to long, invest in my own network and that's what I was able to do. And so, uh, it was, it was great, but that, that definitely helped as far as, uh, allowing me the, uh, the ability to be able to launch Zeus, which was, uh, which was probably one of the most difficult things I've been able to do. But um, but yeah, had a great great run as far as selling shows, facilitating the shows, full service production company. It was great. I uh, had a great a, a lot of great partners. Worked with a lot of great people, a lot of great networks. And so uh, at this point in my life, I'm 35. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, recognize that really there weren't any black owned networks really uh, in the SBOD space. Um, and a lot of linear networks, which I thought was a dying business. You know, nobody really watches appointment TV like they used to. So no, you know, nobody wants to go home and watch. Hey, it comes yeah, on at nine o'clock. Right. <laughs> it's just it's not really exciting. So Netflix just they've always been ahead of the curve, you know, in their philosophy and what they what what they uh, you know pretty much came up with and created is something that everybody's following now. I still think it's a place for appointment TV. It just has to be an event. You know what I mean? Like Game of Thrones yeah, sure. was an event. You know what I mean? Like it's certain shows that capture everybody's attention at sure what day, what time. Yeah, I think. I mean, look, I. I, I, I think it's a dying business. I hear you. I, I just I don't I don't think I just don't think our generation our era is interested in, in watching content that way. Right. Um, I mean, but it's a it's a it's a. Oh. That's why even on like our HBO, they might have it on all day that day. You can watch it on demand yeah. before it comes on at night because yeah. I don't think I ever really watch anything when it comes on. Yeah, yeah. but the social media aspect of it makes you want to in, interact. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I think Insecure was a show like that. Um, the the love and hip hop's definitely up. I mean, they're but the, the ratings are declining. You mm-hmm. know, they're declining significantly. And uh, I mean, here's the thing: they, I mean, they make those networks make money uh, because they have deals with the cable and satellite mm-hmm. providers. So, you know, they're gonna always have budgets um, until Comcast or Directv or Dish Network or whoever you know tells them that they're not gonna renew new, right. new their contract. But right. you know, people don't understand. You know, that's the end game, right? You know, uh, and that's kind of what I'm focused on. In this next phase of my Ooh. life, after Zeus is having owning real estate in the air, um, and so that that's a you know that that's a that's a big deal that most people aren't really aware of. And owning and, your own cable provider. Yeah, owning owning wireless internet. You mm-hmm. know, owning you know there's there are no black owned you know uh, you know internet providers, and so uh, or or you know or uh, uh, you know cable providers. So for me, that's that's really important. But those 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 big conglomerates, you know, they end up. You know, generating so much money in revenue. I mean, you're talking hundreds of billions of dollars a year. Stupid money. And and that's just the revenue, right? So it's about we're to be not talking about the value. Now. Right. No, it's crazy. So you know, those. Com- I mean, the Comcast they're charging you know on average 146 dollars a month, 
people pay you know these bundle deals for internet mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. and cable. So yes, to your point, even though they're not watching like they used to, they're still using the service and they're paying the fee. And ultimately, the cable and satellite providers are paying the networks, you know, to to operate. And then they obviously make money off of advertising. You know, uh, but again, that's that's a tough business. Do you think it was a bonus for you to be a young black man owning your own network, getting people to believe in you and sign up? Or do you think it was way harder? Even because I see some of the shows that you're doing. Obviously, Ray J was up here yeah. giving you props for the <laughs> Zeus network. But when you first were launching it and you had this vision and it wasn't in existence before that, how hard was it for you to get people to say, OK, I believe in this. I want to partner with you. Man, it took it took it took a minute. It took a minute because you know it was a lot of experimentation going on. Uh, you know, in, in the the SVOD space is a tough is a tough business. You know what I mean? And for me, it was like you know Netflix was all about convenience, choice, and control. But they kind of they they've I mean they've they 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 run this space right. Mm-hmm. And so for me, it was really about figuring out you know creating a niche platform and 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 how can I kind of like you know, uh, do something different and create an opportunity for our talent and our content partners um, to be able to monetize in a unique way um, outside of just being a talent and getting paid. And so I, <clears throat> I think I was able to do that and my team, we were able to do that. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's it, 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 it's tough. It's tough, but it's great. I mean, we're having a lot of success. Our model, <clears throat> our model works. You know, when we when we first started, we 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 thought that you know, uh, it would it would work with just um, giving influencers with following, you know, uh, shows, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, these influencers who maybe you've heard of on on social media, but we learned very quickly, you know, that 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 it's not just about that. It's really about finding real talent and and developing the shows out. Long form cor- content works. I think one of the challenges that Quibi, even though they raised billions of dollars, yeah. um, you know, they they struggle because you know, you know, it was only on your phone, and I think the, people yeah, had the issue with not being able to mirror it. But it was it. also short form; people would get through the the content very mm-hmm. quickly. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they put a lot of time in creating hit shows, right? People want to see hits. It's not about having a bunch of filler content mm-hmm. saying, "Hey, uh, you know, this talent's on the network." Nobody cares, right? right? You can get content in so many different ways and different verticals. So, you know, having, you know, just having a talent on a network is not is not you know, all you need. You really, really got to figure out what is a show that your customers want to watch. That's right. You know, what's loud, what's provocative. Now, you know, we've had a lot of, you know, our, our content is a little controversial, <laughs> but, yeah, you know. Yeah, we saw that scene with the, uh, <laughs> killing the babies. Oh, yeah, those. double homicide. Yeah, Jocelyn, oh, you know, whoa. look, Jocelyn, Jocelyn, China, <laughs> you know, her mom, uh, <sighs> you know, it's, it's a lot. You know, Ray J and Princess, they're great. Uh, we have a show with Chance. You know, I mean, we have tons of shows. Chance the Rapper? No, no, no. Chance. Uh, so we. Chance. Uh, oh, Chance. chance from, yeah, yeah. From, from one more chance. Man. I always wonder, do you get cease and desist from VH1? <laughs> because you use a lot of their talent. I would think that they would be under contract when they sign these love and hip hop contracts. And Yeah, they, so. you know, the thing is, they don't, they don't own the talent. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And that's, that's the thing. Uh, we don't, we don't go after. Yes, I got a lot of, I got a bunch of threats, cease and desist letters from Viacom. You know, I've talked to pretty much the head. The guy called me a couple times. Great guy, very respectful conversation. Who? Who'd you talk to? Uh, his name is Keys. I forgot his last name, but okay. uh, he's the COO of Viacom, mm-hmm. and uh, we've had a couple conversations. Um, and yes, they were, you know, VH1. I guess were. I don't know why they were upset, but these people weren't under contract. Right. It's um, only for a certain amount of time. Like usually, yeah. Once the show is over, there's a, a period of time that you're still under contract, and then mm-hmm. you're free but, to go. But a lot of the contracts have derivatives. So if you're a talent, so, you... but that's not our issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's not our issue. That, like that's that they if they're in breach, that's not that has nothing to do with, with us. You know what I mean? So uh, my thing is like, you know, if 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 they have to figure that out, you right. know, with with their, I mean, but Viacom was saying that we we're torturously interfering with their talent, <laughs> and it's like really like. You know what I mean? I, like we're Let not. People make money, damn. And that's right. the thing. I, I feel like you know a lot of talent, you know, are, are undervalued for a v- variety of bias reasons and perceived flaws, whether that's age, appearance, or whatever. We just wanted to give these people the opportunity to own their content, to make some real money, right. you know, and to be involved in the creative, and uh, and 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 just have a great experience. And that was that was what I wanted to do different than any other network. And so we gave them that opportunity. 
And so we said, look, you are valuable. You're valuable. Jocelyn, you're valuable. They built the network primarily off of you and a few others. You know, you're their flagship. I don't think you realize how much money mm -hmm. you're, you're helping to generate, you know, for these networks. Yeah. And so, you know, they make all this revenue, their valuations go sky high. I mean, it's so, and you don't, you have, you have, you have nothing. You don't have a piece of it at all. Yeah. And so for me, it was important to give them that, you know, we, we were like, look, you got to have some ownership in your shows. You guys got to be right. involved in the creative. We'll provide all the tools. We'll facilitate the productions. You don't have to worry about that, but you know, we'll market it. We'll do our thing. And so, you know, even on their social platforms, that's a huge, that's a lot of power too. Mm -hmm. You know, so now you're not only a, a talent, that it are, it is drawing folks in because people just love to watch you, but you're a marketing machine, right? <laughs> it's like, you know, you, you should be making way more money than what they would pay you per episode to be featured on a show. Who are some people that you would love to get on Zeus that you've been trying to be in talks with that hasn't happened? Man, uh, these great these great folks here, uh, a guy named Charlemagne and uh, Angela Yee, I would love to work with them. Uh, <laughs> uh, DJ MV. No, I, look, I would love to work with a lot of people. I think for me, uh, you know, right now we're, we we have a lot of folks inquiring about Zeus and wanting to work with us. Um, you know, I, I so for me. Y'all making noise. Oh, yeah, we're making noise. That's the hardest thing to do. We're making noise. We're generating a lot of revenue. How many people have doubled back that you tried to approach previously that turned it down and now they're it's like, a, oh, it's, a, it's a couple people. It's a couple <laughs> people. But, you know, we, we, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, look, we're open for business. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, uh, even Diddy, I did, I don't know if you guys saw, he was, you know, we just hung out not too long ago. I saw that. And, uh, he, he's interested. You know, he was interested in working with Zeus. Uh, you know, it, it's a lot of folks that, that, you know, want to work with this. But for me, it's, it's, it's about also creating these shows that people want to watch. So it's not just saying, hey, let me, you know, and then it's harder when people are paying for it. You know what right. I mean? So, it really has to make sense, and uh, and but yeah, I mean, Car of course, Cardi B. You know, we love to work with her with a Nicki Minaj. I mean, Cardi got the Facebook show going on. Now. Yeah, she she mm -hmm. has the face, but she could have a show with show with Zeus. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, they and don't we do don't exclusive at Facebook. Yeah, I would be surprised if she's exclusive. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people. I think we we have a lot of folks that we're talking to now that we're developing shows with or in negotiations with, like Nene Leaks. You know Tamar Braxton. We have we we have uh, projects. Yeah, so you got Jason Lee and Tamar hosting Jason. the uh, baddies. Yes, yes, that the, was smart. The re yeah, we got we got those guys hosting the reunions. We had uh, Lunell host the the the, the Jocelyn reunion, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we're 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 just trying to provide tons of opportunities. You know nobody's really we're not we don't really have a lot of competition right now, um, as far as you know black networks in the yes spot space. Um, we don't. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to get as many shows as we can. We're trying to employ as, as many people. I mean, we're employing hundreds of people behind the scenes in front of the camera. So it's a great feeling to be able to do that and to be able to provide jobs and be able to, again, uh, you know, uh, work with talent that are actually valued and, and, and allow them to monetize in a, in a major way. So, uh, Zeus is, Zeus is doing incredibly well and the reunion shows do really well. Uh, Jocelyn's reunion show was very loud. We had a two-parter. I don't know if y'all saw it. It was crazy. It was crazy. You know, I mean, that show was just loud. I mean, it was, we, we, it, it I look. We, Jocelyn we, is extremely entertaining. I, no matter what, I will give her that. Like, she's, she is, a, she, she's, she's great TV. She's an all-star. She's an all-star. That's what Ray would say. You know, they're all all-stars. Ray's mm -hmm. an all-star. Jocelyn's an all-star. They've been doing this for, for a long time. They get it. China, she was great to work with. You know that was a tough. When she was up here. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. we were help, we were here filming with you guys. She was that that she was she was great. It was a lot going on, but you know we kept we kept it raw, uh, unfiltered, uncensored. So, um, yeah, China, China, China show did really well. That was actually China show really helped, you know, take us to another level. Right, because that was when I first really was paying attention. Yeah. when she was on there, and then you you guys also again, you know, were able to license the show yeah we, we licensed it but it, that show was so loud you know and her the relationship with her and her mom yeah. you know has always been something that's been controversial so it's like i feel like bet uh vh1 a lot of these networks we they should just keep synergy with y'all because y'all y'all yeah. y'all start off y'all get things going y'all get things mm -hmm. moving y'all make a lot of noise and then it would just yeah. make sense just to license y'all content yeah license or figure out a strategic partnership I, look mm -hmm. they look at us as disruptors i'm like look how can we be extenders we don't want to just disrupt everybody's business um how can we extend you know and y'all taking the chances they wouldn't 
There it's you not go. like all that talent wasn't there already. They weren't right, you exactly. Know? And especially exactly. during COVID, like you mm-hmm. said, it was really hard for them to get fresh new content. Right. And so that was a great time for you guys, yeah. actually. Yeah, no, COVID really helped, you know, because people were inside watching a ton of a ton of shows, you know. So we just happened to be one that they were watching and um but yeah, it was it, it COVID helped. It helped big time. But I think honestly our content is 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 something that people just want to watch and and they've they've been enjoying Zeus and and everything we've been doing. So we have, we have some great shows coming up. You know, one more chance. That was uh that was again a huge hit for us. Season one, um, and we're doing we're we're in production right now on season two. We have a series with Drea Michelle that's coming out. Um, we have project with what's Saucy her Simpson. what's her show about? Um, it's just following Drea. It's a docu series following her life. You know, her personal life, her businesses. Uh, it's great. I think uh, Drea is a, a great talent. You know, she's she's done some incredible things. She's very entrepreneurial. You know, she uh, she's 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 doing her thing. She's mm-hmm. doing her thing. And so we're happy to premiere the show uh, very soon. And so yeah, Drea Drea will be coming out uh, on Zeus very very soon. And uh, like I said, Saucy Santana, one more chance. I He's... love Saucy Santana. Saucy Santana, that's that's that guy's interesting. He's interesting, <laughs> but no, we love Saucy. He's talented too. Uh, he be making some songs that's super catchy. All yes, the time. I love Saucy. Viral. Saucy, Saucy is great. You know. So does that mean Young Miami is gonna be on there? Yeah, too? and it's our first like it's a dating show. Mm-hmm. You know, so it it is it is our first kind of gay dating show. I thought um, Saucy was in a relationship. Hey. I don't know. You just learn. I just learned something. <laughs> All right. So, so, so how do y'all make money off subscriptions? Or? <laughs> yeah. So we, you know, we charge four ninety nine a month, okay. and so you know, we 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 make money every month. Every how many month. subscribers I got right now? I can't tell you that, man. Okay. 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 Uh, I, you but know, because then do everybody's gonna annual, be counting my bread. You if know. If you want to do an annual subscription, it's forty nine. Forty nine ninety nine. Why do I know all? I the know. Numbers? Look, <laughs> are you a subscriber? We got. If you're not, we got to get you signed up. We got to yeah. get both of you signed up. But uh, yeah, we 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 have a lot of subscribers. I mean, we we've. I don't want to say how many subscribers, but it it it's more than a million. Is I I could say that yes, I could say it's more than a million. But you know um, when you selling, huh? When you selling. <laughs> I know right. <laughs> um, you know I, I I'm trying to for me it's really about if we if we sell the company I'm, I mean we're trying to create a billion dollar business. I I don't I I you know those are tough decisions. We're getting those calls now. Do you have investors? No, I was I, I independent. I, mm-hmm. I financed it myself. Uh, aggregated some influencers to help you know come in and uh, King Badge, Amanda Cerny, Daystorm. They came in and yep. uh, we you know I brought them on, uh, in into Zeus and and gave them some equity when we first launched. And uh, I know they were like yes. No, for sure, for <laughs> sure. And uh, they really helped to get the, the the network off the ground. But uh, but yeah, we we've 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 definitely had uh, and I have some other partners, Shane Norman, Binku. Some other guys uh, that are part of the the network, but you know I'm majority owner in the company. You know I pretty much make all the the, the, the decisions. But um, we have a great team. It's a, it's a great team, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, yes, we are we are very close to having a valuation of probably a billion dollars, if Woo! not now. I mean, so yeah. That, Congratulations. Thank you. That's thank dope. you. So I'm I'm happy. But I don't know. I don't know if I want to sell. What do you think? You think I should sell the company? Oh, uh, I'm not 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 quite yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it just depends. Like, you know, Bob Johnson sold when it made sense for him to sell. You yeah. Know? Yeah. You, and it just depends. Like, you always have to know what your next move is. So if you know what you're selling for to invest in something else, then it's also like you could also get an investor and sell part of it and still remain involved. I think for yourself, it's always what makes sense. That's what Bob yeah. did from the beginning. Yeah. Bob had an investor. Yeah. Before he launched BET. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you no, know, and it, and I, and it, but his investor told him like, "Yo, I'm not, I'm not selling my share to you sell." Right. 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 So when he sold, that's when he got his. his and money I think back. it also depends on who it is, right? Right. Because- it, yes, all that matters. Mm-hmm. All that matters. It's it's really about who it is. It has to be the right partner, the right the right investors. If we if we go that route, I mean, look, we may make so much money that we really just don't need it. Right. Um. But you know, I don't know. I mean, I the, the sky is truly the limit. I mean, right now Netflix has two hundred plus million subscribers. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So there, there is an there is a huge appetite for people who subscribe to these types of platforms and watch these types of shows. So I think the goal is for us to continue to diversify our content. You know, we're we're not going to just do you know reality the entire time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we we are we're going to invest in scripted live live content, um, all sort all, all sorts of things, and to try to you know grow and scale the company. But um, right now, reality is working and is doing really really well for us. But I, I don't know. I got to think about if I want to sell. A lot of people tell me don't sell. A lot of people 
And you don't know, don't worry about what a lot of people say. You do what you feel like you need they, to do. That's there you all. go. There well, you clearly go. Clearly, you've done this a million times. Right. And your end, your end goal is uh you know a cable provider. So yeah, I'm trying to you, you know, know that's the, that's you're the, gonna need the capital to get that. That's true. That's you know? true. And this this will be probably a stepping stone to, to to make that happen. But but yeah, man, I'm I'm excited about everything. Uh, we're we're doing we're doing really well. Zeus is doing. Oh, we have the, the Bad Girl Show. I forgot about that with mm-hmm. Natalie Nunn and Tanisha. You know, their EPs on it. Yes, they are. I don't know if you guys. Is that weird for them to be on the show and also EP it? Because then with the other women on there, do they feel a way about that? It's definitely tough. Yes, we had a lot of challenges with that because they're on screen and so they have to participate when there's fights and drama that happens. It's like, you know, they're EPs. (laughs) It's all the time, though. Shawnee O'Neill was on the show and she was EP. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But, you know, it, 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 it does create. You know issues. It right, does. Then they it can does control some of the editing and take. Well, it. they don't really control nah. the editing. I think it's just more so. You know, the certain cast members feel like there's favoritism. Right. You know, and then you know that's when you'd be like, yeah. I'm an executive producer, bitch. Like, yeah. I, you know, <laughs> basically and that, that happens. Other people feel crazy. That happens. You know, and <laughs> but but it is their show. I mean, they're giving yeah. they're giving these people. We give a lot of flexibility. So for us, it's like, yeah, we'll let you EP. Help us cast this thing. You got to market it. You got to do all. There's all these responsibilities that they're taking on. So we expect them to deliver. So, you know, it's not easy. It's I, I will say it's not easy for them. You know, the Jocelyns when they're EPing and starring in the shows, the Natalie Nuns, even the Ray J's. I mean, it's it's tough, you know, but they they they're getting through it. They're learning a lot, too. So they're enjoying the process, you know, as EPs, as talent. They're they're understanding, you know, the business aspect a lot more, too. So I think their whole mentality has changed just based upon the Zeus experience. You mm-hmm. gave them the opportunity to boss up and not just be talent. There you go. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's it in a nutshell. They're they're all bosses. And I think they should be treated like bosses. How do your parents feel about your network? Oh man, that <laughs> my I, first of all, I love my family. Uh, we're a very close family. I'm, uh, I have, I have. It's five of us. Um, my, my siblings, uh, my brother LJ. We work together. Uh, I, my sister, my brother-in-law. We all work together. It's like kind of a family business, um, except for my parents. Uh, they're not. <laughs> they're not involved. My my brother Lauren and L'Oreal, I love them. They're all great, and uh, they're they're very supportive of me. Uh, my mom is, you know, she's 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 supportive. You know, she, <laughs> does, you know, my dad is totally against the, the Zeus network. All that you secular know. stuff you he, out here he, doing. He, basically, you know, <laughs> and, and it's, it's it's you know we have these conversations all the time, and it's you know he's so, I mean he look he's the bishop of Israel, so he's out there and, and he lives in Israel right now, and he's doing his thing. So you know for him he, he you know there there it, it 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 creates a little bit of pressure for him, you know knowing. You know, you're you're religious, you're Christian, you know, and and your your son owns a network called Zeus. You know, that's very secular. So, but well, just let them know you got more to tithe now. That's all. Yeah. That's <laughs> right, it. more to tithe. Right. But is that hard <laughs> for you that your dad's not supportive? More to tithe. I'm sure that bothers you. It, it does. You know, it does. We have these conversations all the time. I, I explain to him. You know, look, look, and that's a that's a whole different conversation as far as religion and you know what people believe in. You know, he's he's very. You know, uh, he's very, very religious. And so I'm I'm I've become a little bit more open minded when it comes to my spirituality and in life and just with, based on all the people that I'm meeting, the different experiences, what I'm learning as an individual. So, you know, for him, yes, he is. He's older. He's stuck on his own ways. He's very successful. I, I he's a he's a hero of mine. I love my dad. And uh, but but it, it is tough. It's tough. And but but. You know, we 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 get through it. You know, I I have my points. He has his points, <laughs> and uh, you know, we we debate all the time. But he, I think overall, he's proud of me. He's proud of all the success I've I've been having, and uh, you know what we've been doing as a team. So it's uh it, it's great. I, I I love my family, but um, they're all supportive in their own way. But okay. but Zeus is uh you know is is going it's going up, and uh, you know we we we're we're you know nothing's gonna stop us. So. At this point, it's just about continuing to put put out great content and work with uh, great content partners, and that's that's really what we're doing. So, well, oh, now I will you, brother. I will say this last thing: we did try, we experimented. It didn't really work uh, with Omarion. We did we did uh, invest in the Millennium Tour, mm-hmm. and uh, that was one of our shows that uh, just didn't didn't really hit the way we wanted. I didn't know that was a show. That was a show. Yeah. 
We uh we it's uh, yeah there you go. <laughs> Why do you think it didn't work? I didn't know that. Would y'all follow the Millennium Tour? Or something? Yeah, we followed the Millennium Tour. We, might we, see we, that. we did the B2K. Uh, we we put it out on Zeus. Uh, did they give you the access you needed? Yeah, all the access. Mm-hmm. I mean, we we you know uh, it was it was we we believed it. We we invested a lot of money into it, and it that was one that was the only project that didn't really hit the way we wanted. Who was to. The, who was the main focus of that show? Was oh, it Omarion? Omarion should have been Rasby. I hey look he Seriously? Omarion Omarion. You know, I don't know why. You know, they put out a. a, a I woke up one day and a and a blog was saying he's suing me. You know, I'm like, it didn't even make sense. So, you know, because of the subscriber numbers that he got, but for me, uh, that you know, it just did. It didn't. It didn't hit. It just didn't hit. And, Interesting. And uh, but I, like I said, it was. It was. We invest in a lot of different projects. We invest in a lot of different projects. You know, and we experiment. But some hit, some don't. But we're like, we've hit like. 90% of our shows have hit. They've been successful. They've right. been great. And so, uh, you know, we're excited. But, um, yeah, I appreciate I appreciate everybody that works with Zeus. So we're we're looking forward to the future and everything that's uh, happening at the network. Well, congrats to you. Congrats to Thank Jocelyn. You. Congrats to Ray J. I mean, it makes so much sense why Zeus has the success it has because yeah. of your background in television. Mm-hmm. So that makes all the sense in the world. I get it. I totally understand that. Yes, absolutely. Would you want to do a home makeover show since you have That's, some experience with that? Absolutely. I think it has to be the right home makeover <laughs> show. But for sure, we would we would definitely want to explore different types of uh, genres of reality and, and shows. I will. I, I want to say this because when, when Ray J and Bow Wow were on here, <laughs> Bow Wow apologized for not having me at his house. And his version of the story is just not true. His security guards were not going to beat me up. I just want to make it clear <laughs> for trying to. I go. forgot about that. He okay. said you said you tried to jump. He the said fence. he wanted to apologize, and I appreciated his apology on here on this platform. But uh, yeah, he was saying he wouldn't let me in the house, and his security guards were going to beat me up, and all this other stuff. That just didn't happen. It's just not true. Uh, he invited some of the bad girls over and Zeus, and he didn't. He didn't think I was the owner of Zeus. He didn't believe. He didn't believe you it. Young. He, I, I was like, hey, and man, you're black. I'm black. It's, if you're the crazy. same makeup, Isn't that crazy? but you was white, he would believe you. I, I, you know, it's crazy. It's cra- exactly, exactly, and that's 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 unfortunate. I, you know, it, it's like that. You know, that's it's, crazy. I recall you saying that because you look so young, yeah. that it was difficult for you sometimes in these meetings. It's it's yeah, it's meeting. I mean, it's 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 weird. Like owning a network. I mean, you 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 think about a white older older guy or some some. I don't know. I just I don't know. The perception of network owners are are interesting. But you know, yeah, Bow Wow wouldn't let me in his house. I I, I got in. He finally, I you know, once I told him who I was, like I, I wasn't. He was saying I was fast talking. I was talking like I'm talking oh, to you guys come right on, now. Sean. But yeah, it, it is what it is. But I appreciated Ray J having my back. Uh, uh, you know, when they were interviewing with you guys, I definitely had a bag for Bow Wow. So if he ever wants to come to Zeus, for sure, you know, we'll make something happen. And we'll, you know, I think he's a great talent. I think he's done television, uh, you know, for a long time. He's 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 obviously made a lot of networks money and brought a lot of visibility to their platforms. And so, uh, you know, yeah, we, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But I just wanted to clear that up. That's not what happened. The security guards were not trying to beat me up. And uh, <laughs> it was all love. It was just like a misunderstanding. Oh, bow wow. <laughs> but, but well, yeah. Mr. So Lemmy Plummer. Thank you. The founder and CEO of the Zeus Network. Thank you, brother. Thank you, guys. I appreciate this. Yes, sir. Appreciate this. All right. 